Welcome everybody to the next episode of Cap Vista Clips. Today I have John and Stephen from East 2 and they're going to be discussing their uh, their offering, their global offering um, and um, what's what's in store for, for, for their industry. Hi guys, how are you? Good morning or well, well, good evening. Yeah. <laughs> good evening to I'm, us. I'm, I'm, to you. I'm in Europe, so good. Yeah, exactly. Good morning. Yeah. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, um, you know, I think we're going to just jump straight into it. Um, I really want to know what's your story? What's the background? Um, how did you get up to this point before um, coming to East 2? Um, so my background is is largely, well, it's totally actually in the travel and lifestyle sector. Um, so I had a sort of 20 year apprenticeship, if you can call it that, uh, with Qantas and British Airways um, in the commercial division, uh, both in Asia Pacific and in Europe. Um, and that was a wonderful experience uh, with those two, two wonderful brands. Um, and then the, the internet arrived and uh, John and I had the opportunity to reshape uh, the way business is done in that sector. Uh, so, I, so I left, I left Qantas at, at that time and uh, we started a company called EB2. And we set about uh, building a technology, an airline internet booking engine. Mm -hmm. um, and we were right at the forefront of it all. And uh, it was a wonderful story. Uh, eight years later, that was acquired by one of the big technology players in the States, Sabre, in the sector. Wow. Um, and that technology continues to power airline systems around the world today. So it was a wonderful journey. It was a wonderful experience. Um, and we've been involved in travel and lifestyle ever since, both not only in the sort of technology side, but also sort of in the social media side. Um, and then we, we, about two or three years ago, decided there's another opportunity which we'll talk to you about, which, is, which uh, was created because of market needs. Um, and we started East 2. So uh, that's, that's my background in brief. Well. A yeah, little bit of rundown on myself. <clears throat> I mean, I'm, I'm basically have worked uh, pretty much for myself uh, most of my life, um, usually in the technology space or predominantly in the technology space, and certainly focus a certain about below the line marketing. So if you go back a few years, there was, there was a lot of um, data, data mining that used to take place and direct mailing and all those sorts of things before we had the internet. Um, so, and, and have worked um, in, in the... As, as Stephen said, and with EB2, we had a, a, a fantastic, um, I suppose, if you look at that marketplace that we worked in, there were probably um, four major players, maybe four or five major players. We were the only player that wasn't a public company. Um, and we managed to, over those eight years, as Stephen um, said, to create a, a product that was considered world leading and ultimately was taken out by one of one of our competitors um, at that time. So yeah, technology technology is sort of my my thing, um, and uh, yeah. So and what we're doing now excites me because we are talking about cutting edge technology and what we're developing um, and delivering something that that's totally unique to the marketplace. Okay, so. Uh, very much a, a travel and technology background, which you know leads up into into what you're doing today. Um, you know, why did you start the company? What's what's that that uh, that need in the market that's that's driven you to to, to start it? So um, John and I sat down in in Sydney um, three years ago, and we we were sort of frequent flyers with with airlines and uh, booking travel. And we realized that really actually it's a very fragmented experience. And despite 20 years of the internet, uh, the travel and lifestyle sector hasn't moved on to the same degree as some other sectors. Um, and we saw an opportunity in the marketplace for the, to, to try and prevent that fractured environment that you, you go through when you're booking travel. Um, and we also, so we looked at it through the lens of a traveler, our own personal experiences, um, having to book different components through different channels and having to bring it all together and realized after 20 years that really, really hadn't progressed to the same extent. New technologies have come on. And we also looked at it through the lens of, of major suppliers in, in the travel and lifestyle sector and what are their issues. And we thought that we can build a model that actually allows the major suppliers to benefit uh, in, with the new technologies, cut out intermediaries, cut out costs, administrative reconciliation costs, but also deliver a much better experience for their customers and have a direct relationship with their customers as well. 
so we set about designing a, a new model, and um, and yeah, and we we we've, we've got a we've got a, a, a three year contract with with a major supplier in Europe, um, which I'll talk to you about as well. Um, and so yeah, so we so that was really the genesis for East to uh, looking at it from a consumer uh, the consumer lens, but also through the major supplier lenses and trying to deliver a value proposition to both parties. And we think we've done that. Awesome, awesome. So tell me about the solution. Tell me, tell me about East 2. I mean, um, imagine that I'm, I'm a, a customer or a user. What, what does it look like? Walk me through the solution. So from a customer's point of view, we've looked at it and sort of said, and consider things like G GDPR and privacy and all that sort of stuff. And we sort of said, well, really, as, as a traveler, uh, your your brand your brand is not valued in the marketplace. Other other participants um, gain from from your travel, but but you as the traveler don't necessarily gain from that. So we looked at it and said, how can we actually uh, create value to the brand? Part of that is driven by um, you, for example, on your mobile, you would have a profile. Um, you if you you could share your travel intents, uh, your travel intent with the suppliers that you want to share it with. Uh, so you have total control of your own uh, motivation and your own intent. Um, and you, if, if you share that, that is rewarded. Um, so the more you share, the more you get rewarded. So in many respects, it's a program that brings back the value to you and allows your uh, partners or your suppliers and vendors to be able to deliver better curated offers back to you. Um, because they start to understand you. One of, the, one of the issues for the major vendors is that they, for example, if we take airlines, they really only know you when you arrive at check-in. They, they might have your, your mobile number, your email address, and your passport number, and it's, but they really don't know what your intent is getting to the airport, at the airport, and at the at other destination. So these suppliers, vendors, are looking for an end-to-end -end view of you as a traveler. Yeah. And then being able to add value to that proposition as opposed to just competing on price. So we've sort of inverted the model for the suppliers to be able to generate value and not compete on price, consider an end-to-end -end view of the consumer, um, and also allow the consumer to benefit from that. So it's, it's about uh, data. So in, in reality, uh, our model is, is a global, global model. It's a, it's a data model. Um, and it allows all of the participants in that uh, marketplace to benefit, including the, the consumer. Um, so the experience is much better. So for example, um, you would go to the airport, you, you book Uber to get to the airport. At the airport, they know that, uh, for example, you might buy duty-free a particular thing, and you might like a particular type of um, gin. Uh, you could share that. The, the, the retailers at the airport could, could provide you with you know the best options that are available for that uh, the, the uh, and and so it's, it's a marketplace that allows you to um i guess share your intent and get better value offers back awesome i suppose, I suppose the, the other thing with it is that it, it ultimately is a peer-to-peer -peer transaction <clears throat> so what what we're doing is is cutting out the middleman um so from the consumer's point of view um ultimately that should drive cheaper cheaper prices um for example if you look at um, someone booking a hotel and going through one of the uh, the consolidators, um, those consolidators can take anything from from twenty to thirty percent of of that booking. Um, and guess who's paying for that? It's a consumer that pays for that. So, so that's one of the, one of the key key benefits for the the, the, the traveller, apart from um, being rewarded for spending, um, is to take out that cost of that middleman. Okay, so. Um, tell me more about you know the the industry industry itself. Um, I mean, I understand what your what what you're doing in the solution, but but um, you know what are the pain points in the travel industry? What are the pain points for for the client and then the partners that you that you mentioned? What 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 are you 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 solving? I um I understand yeah you know, from the client's point of view it's you're not competing on price it's a better 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 offering um ultimately if if you're if you're cutting out the moon man you are you know getting a better price so there's there is incentive for the the, the customer to 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 use the platform um but, but what are the other pain points that you're that you're solving? 
so I attended one of the first in-person events a couple of weeks ago in Europe, um, run by the sort of leading uh, industry association. There was probably four or five hundred uh, senior executives, C-suite executives, and CEOs there. It was a three-day event, and actually there's was, there's was, there three key themes in that event, um, and those were uh, customer centricity is absolutely paramount, and it's not happening in the sector. Um, digital transformation and uh, migrating off legacy systems. So we actually address all three of those. So it was a, it was a wonderful event to participate in, in the sense that our, our journey started with through the lens of a customer, as I mentioned earlier. Um, we we recognise that the sector um, requires to migrate to you know complete digital transformation and migrate off legacy systems. And those are, I guess those are the key pain points from the from this from the industry. They don't really know the client. They know the client for the bit that they offer, mm -hmm. but they don't know the client for end to end. Um, digital is being driven by, and actually, in fact, in many respects, the last 18 months has helped us because of COVID, and this came across actually at that event as well, has accelerated the need to go digital, everything, all things digital. Um, and there is a real appetite for innovation, for change, for new models, new systems. Um, based on the fact that the need is being driven by the consumer and and also to unshackle themselves from from dated legacy systems yeah and in fact in fact the sector uh, 40 or 50 years ago was leading sector in technology um, but somehow they just got stuck with very robust good technology but it hasn't moved on and they haven't jumped on the, the bandwagon to the extent that they fully can when the internet came along as well as distributed ledgers technologies that we were involved with. Well, I suppose if you look back 20 years um, plus, <clears throat> when Steve and I first up, set up EV2, the internet was only just, just emerging. Um, airlines were excited because for once, rather that the, they actually thought they were going to own the customer, um, that they would take bookings off the high street travel agencies. Um, and despite the best efforts, they failed. Um, so they probably know no more about their customers now than they did 20 years ago. Um, and what happened is a lot of those inter intermediaries, the Expedias, some of the, the online travel agencies jumped in and took that space off the airlines. Um, yeah. There's another opportunity right now for those airlines or hotels or anyone who is in that, that sort of managing a large number of bookings to actually take ownership back again um, by utilizing um, what we're proposing to do yeah I, the, the the space is is quite fragmented and um the the you, you met it's funny that you mentioned that the um the airlines are trying to you know they thought they were going to own the customer um they, there's no incentive to, to to book directly through the airline um a lot of the times and and, and we'll take you know, Virgin Australia as an example, and this is obviously before COVID, um, but if you were to go to the Virgin Australia website, the prices are more expensive from the Virgin Australia website than they are on Webjet. Um, same flight, same same seat, everything's the same. It's just cheaper on a third party who's, who's getting charged commission than it is through the actual airline. So there's no, there's no incentives. Um, there's, no, there's no, I mean, besides the, the frequent flyer, um, you know, the little card, which I don't know if many people actually use the points to, to you know, redeem for goods. Um, there's, there's no real loyalty for the airlines as well. You know, well, there's no incentives. It, it, yeah, interesting you say that because it, in many respects, um, you know, the loyalty programs for some of the larger airlines have, have been very profitable and some of the most profitable uh, divisions in those airlines. Um, but they only cater for approximately 20% of the travellers. So there's still 80% of the travellers that are not, are not being looked after or not being recognised. Um, so, yeah, so it is, is a real issue. And part, part of the issue that you mentioned there, Daniel, is the fact that they don't really know the customer. Um, they don't really have the end-to-end -end view to be able to deliver something that's more, more value-driven rather than price-driven, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and I think that's, that's a key element of it. Um, the other, the other key element of our, our solution, which is worth mentioning, is that, and even when I was in the airline industry, um, we, we worked on data 
and we did forecasts and we based on historical what happened in the last 10 years, the last decade, what we think is going to happen in the next 10 years. That's completely irrelevant now. That, that, mm -hmm. that model of, of data research, data analysis is, is no longer relevant. Um, you really need real time data of uh, consumer sentiment, consumer intent that adds value to what it is you're trying to do as, as a major vendor, whether you're a hotelier or an airline or a car rental company. Um, so the model needs to be able to deliver what the market mood is, uh, so that that provides the agility for the participants in that to be able to provide a better relationship and a better engagement with the traveler. Uh, so these are all elements of, of our of our model. Yeah, perfect. So you mentioned before that you have um, you know a, a partnership with with a European airline. Do you, can you can you touch on that? Sure. So actually, we're, we're sort of super excited about this because we've, we've entered into a three-year agreement, a uh, three-year contract with this, this airline. Uh, it's it's, it's government-owned airline. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's very important to uh, its country that it operates to. Um, so we're implementing our solution as we speak. Uh, phase one should go live, uh, if not the end of this year, very early in the new year. Um, the what what's really interesting about this airline is that it provides a tremendous use case for us because it really does embrace all the elements of what we offer uh, not only to the airline but and, but also the airline partners but also the community so in in this instance um 90 percent of the travel is inbound to their destination and our model allows local restaurants local events experiences to participate so the government is really embracing it in the sense that hold on this is fantastic not only does it help bring people to our destination recognize what those people want in real time but also allow the community to get involved in it and it's quite an interesting model um, so vendors that typically would not be part of a, a loyalty program because Typically, they have to be a pretty large vendor. Yep. Uh, they can be onboarded, self-service onboarding. Uh, a, a traveler can say, well, I, I particularly like this experience. It was a wonderful experience yep. diving or whatever the case might be. They, they should be in, in your digital marketplace, and which allows the participants to earn and burn in real time uh, and participate uh, in that experience. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a real, it's a, much, it's a very broad marketplace but it also, interestingly, um, can be designed by your consumers. So typically programs are designed by the provider. There's a lot of sort of central control. There's a lot of time to onboard companies and things like that. In our model, uh, you could actually sit back and let the consumer design the marketplace, the digital marketplace, uh, which is a very strong proposition because ultimately it's the marketplace that delivers against their needs. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, so it's, very, it's a very exciting. Yeah, for yeah, us. yeah. I I understand that now because I've uh, booked flights to the US in January, so I know when, when I'm flying. But now I have to Google. Well, what's on in at this week? What's on at this week? What I'm I'm in San Francisco in these days. What's on? You know where where, where to go? Um, there's no one resource that I can put my dates in. Who know me as a traveler? Know my itinerary because you know. I've, I've got to put it in and then tell me what's 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 good to see and what where's good to eat and you know what what the locals recommend that that sort of thing Daniel, so we might we might we might hire you in east too <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's music that's music to our ears yeah i'm we, i'm we, I'm, we, I'm we might have a conversation offline <laughs> I'm, I'm googling that now and i and um you know, I'm, I'm writing pieces of paper and, and I've got a, a spreadsheet on, on where to go and what to see and what sort of dates. And it's, and it's a complete mess because there isn't, there isn't a solution and not even, not even, um, you know, your local travel agent will, will be able to, to provide that, even though, you know, it, it was one of their offerings, you know, many years ago where they, you know, if, if they went to a certain location, they could, they can give recommendations, but it's, it's, if you go there now, they don't know. They're, they're just they're just sort of sort of guessing, but what you're what you're offering, and and especially collect, connecting the uh, the smaller you know um, restaurants and cafes and things like that, that's that is highly crucial because um, 
the frequent flyer programs and the emails you get are, are usually from you know MasterCard or 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 Visa or they're offering you a, a phone plan or something like that, which has no no relevance to 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 what I'm what I'm after. Absolutely, yes, yeah. spot on. Yeah, and and our solutions are sort of a, a white label product, so it, it's sort of it's it's scalable. Mm -hmm. um so that the european will provide a great use case um but it's, it's a scalable solution um and it's, it's a global proposition yeah that's that's quite interesting so thinking about the industry um how has the industry changed in the last five years and where, where do you think it's going to go to to you know next what what do you think we as a consumer and then what do you think you know uh, these vendors these airlines will be looking at in the next five years um, to, to be perfectly honest, nothing much has changed actually, which which creates the opportunity. Um, so actually, in fact, go, go back even further than five years, um, as, as we sort of mentioned earlier. Um, so so the, I think I think the from an industry perspective, um, what what's really driving the change now and will change in the next uh, five to ten years is consumer centricity and digital. Mm -hmm. um, th those are the key drivers, and that, that came out loud and clear. And in fact, one of <clears throat> one of the speakers um, at the event I attended a couple of weeks ago uh, made quite an interesting comment. Actually, he sort of said that the industry has wrestled with who owns the customer, and he said this has been going on for decades. Like we're not talking about recent times, even before the internet. Uh, who owns the customer? And he said, uh, "Let me tell you who owns the customer. The customer owns the customer." And I thought that was a really, really telling uh, comment. Um, and so, so I think going forward, Daniel, to ask, answer your question, I think from an industry perspective, it's all things digital, all things uh, customer centric. Customer -centric. Uh, so if you can build a model to support those key drivers, um, obviously legacy, that's just got to happen. So that's just a take, you know, that's the infrastructure that's got to change. Um, and digital will help, will help drive that. From, from the consumer's point of view and where we started our journey, it's really about consumer attitudes have changed, you know, significantly. Uh, the internet changed consumer attitudes. And I think during the course of the last four or five years and accelerated by, by COVID is the need to be uh, better understood, better engaged um, with your suppliers. So I think you were commenting on your personal experience earlier. It, exactly that, you know, um, I'm, I'm a member of a number of programs, but they don't really know me. They don't really know who I am or what my needs are, exactly what you were saying earlier. Um, so I think consumer attitudes have changed. They're looking for people that um, address their needs, make it easy for their needs to be met, um, and also value their own brand, their own personal brand. So be rewarded for that. So there's got to be, there's got to be a, a a, a layer or an element in the model that rewards the individual and incentivizes the individual to provide uh, what it is that they would like, which in turn fulfills the entire proposition in a way. Um, so yeah, so I think that that's that's that those, those are the sort of key drivers going forward. Awesome. Okay, so now we get into the interesting part: the raise. Um, how much are you raising? What's it being used for? What's the offer? And and have you had momentum? for the raise uh, so far? Yeah, so, so we've, we're, we're at, um, <clears throat> we've got a uh, convertible loan note, which we've only just, just put out. Mm -hmm. We're looking at doing a raise, initial raise of uh, 1.6 million US dollars. Mm -hmm. um, and that is to take us through to the Series A round. Mm -hmm. So the convertible loan note is tied to the Series A um, pricing, um, but with a 20% um, discount. Um, at that Series A point, um, and the interest on the on the convertible loan is nine percent per annum. Okay, so that's a, sort of pretty much in a nutshell. Um, what's it going to be used for? Um, it, it, there's a number of areas. Um, we we need to continue R and D, and that is, will, will initially certainly in, in the first half of next year as we start to move into finalising. Um, the product range and expanding that out. And of course, you never really stop expanding the product range your whole life. Um, but probably about, you know, around about 30% of that, maybe a little bit higher than 30% will go towards product R&D. Um, around about 40% uh, 
was what we really need to start ramping up probably about quarter two next year will be to ramp up the, the sales and marketing. So start to build our social presence, um, start to engage um, in more depth with um, mainly, mainly the, uh, the major vendors and, and uh, because the part of our business model is to engage with major vendors because they already have the customers. Um, and by working with the major vendors um, and giving them a proposition, it means that they will, if they're going to make money out of it, which is the idea that major vendors make money, they'll put money behind it. So they'll be driving a lot of the consumer acquisition, um, whether it be through their own. Um, and the last, the last about about thirty percent of it will, will be basically um, overheads and administration costs. Um, so, so that's it, I, I suppose, in terms of, of where those funds are, will be used. Um, I think the other, the other element, John, that's worth mentioning is that um, obviously we've had seed investment, mm -hmm. uh, family, yeah. friends, and so on and so forth. And yeah. interestingly, we've got investors reinvesting. Uh, so we, we are getting uh, momentum as a consequence of that. That's, that's, uh, that's really good signs. Um, people are coming in, they believe in the team, they believe in the offering. So, yeah, that's, that, that's great. Okay. Um, and then in terms of uh, the, the raise, um, where, tell me about your ideal investor. Who, what, what, is, what, is, what do they look like? Where are they from? Um, are you looking at um, you know, uh, capital only or are you looking at smart money, people who can open up doors and, and you know, um, into new markets for you? Yeah, I, th I think it's going to be a combination of both. Um, certainly on the, the, the 1.6 million raise is not, is not going to attract um, your larger VC funds or, or those sorts of people. But interestingly, I think what there, there may be some smart money that will look at that making that initial investment with the opportunity of them moving as a Series A investor down the track. So I, I, I think we're... At this this stage, we're at a fairly broad spectrum in terms of um, we expect most of the funds to come in from potentially um, high net worth individuals mm -hmm. um, and potentially funds that would be in a position to take us into a Series A. Yeah, it uh, it might be interesting to to sort of identify people in um, that airline background who have the right connections who can then open up doors to 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 um, potential business development but that's that's an that's an interesting space um because um considering that you are you know white labeling the solution um there is a number of of you know uh, potential uh partners that you can that you can go after and and you know people in the aviation industry tend to to look at uh the 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 latest technology and, and where it can go so i think it's a i think it's a good offering I, uh, for, for me um Given my my uh, my use case and my need, I think I think what you're doing makes sense um, because it will save me a whole lot of time and effort um, and countless spreadsheets and and you know poster notes and things like that to to organise where I'm going and what I'm doing, and hopefully saving money as well. Yes, yes, that's the that's the big one. Um, yeah. But awesome. So. Um, uh, that's that's um, all from me. I, I thank you very much for, for jumping on. It's really good to understand um, sort of uh, your offering, what you're doing. I think, um, as I said, the, the, the space, there is a certain need for it. Um, and anybody who travels uh, quite regularly will, will, will see, you know, even, even if you don't travel quite regularly, if you're new to, to booking flights and accommodation and, and itinerary, it can be a very daunting task. Um, Correct. So I, I think your your in terms of your customer base, it is absolutely you know it's enormous. Um, uh, but then you know uh, the 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 partner base is is quite big as well. So you know it really is a, a global platform. Well, it's a second. It's a twelve point six trillion dollar sector. Yeah. Um, yeah. That that employs one in ten people on the planet. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I think I think we can. You know, as consumers, we can all sort of relate to travel as being a wonderful educator and a wonderful experience. And uh, while Zoom has been wonderful during tough times, yeah, it will. Not, it just doesn't replace <laughs> getting on an aircraft and meeting with someone. Yeah, so, yeah, or, or, or seeing. 
Yeah. So, um, okay, great. Um, anybody who's who's uh, watching this video, if you want to get in touch with uh, the, the team, um, we'll put their details down um, in, in the comments section, or you can reach out to me directly and I'll be happy to, to, to make an introduction. Um, thank you guys for, for jumping on. It's been wonderful to, to chat to you. And uh, I look forward to, to, you know, utilizing your platform. Lovely. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Thanks, Daniel. Nice Thanks, to catch guys. Up. Yeah, nice yeah. to catch up. Thanks, Daniel.